Senate Democrats once again push to abolish the filibuster in a bid to advance a sweeping federal overhaul of our elections. Miko Solner, Capitol Hill reporter for The Washington Times, joins us today to discuss. Uh, so, Mika, thank you for joining us today. What is really stopping Democrats from, uh, from passing their massive federal overhaul of elections here? Well, I think the biggest problem is that uh, Democrats obviously are not going to get Republican support on their voting reform measures, but they also are lacking support um, from members in their own party with key swing vote senators like Senator Manchin, uh, Jason Sinema, who you know have not signaled that they would completely support these packages if, if they're done in a way that kind of overhauls Senate rules, which looks like that might be the only possibility. So I think it depends on the pathway. Um, so there's several roadblocks that they're facing to get this done, um, especially in the timeline that they've given themselves. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a little bit about, you know, what everyone's thinking here, the filibuster. Is it going to stay? Uh, they've talked about removing it before. Uh, what's that looking like right now? So it looks like they're, if they can't get anything done with the voting reform, then uh, Senator Schumer has signaled that he wants to uh, take a look at, at reforming the, uh, the Senate rules. Um, that one also has opposition from a lot of more, the more moderate Democrats in the in the upper chamber. So it's you know it's unclear what's going to happen with that. Uh, obviously, Republicans are opposed to that move, and it would also be a, a huge signal for um, some of these more uh, established uh, senators and even President Biden, who for a long time has said that he was supportive of keeping the filibuster in place. So I think there's a lot of there's a, could be a potential political risk to it. Mm -hmm. And. There's people saying abolish the filibuster, but you're also talking about reforming the filibuster. Is it possible that the filibuster stays in place and then we see some other changes to it, like uh, lowering the threshold from 60 to, you know, a lower number of senators needed? What What are you seeing there? That could be a possibility. I do think that, um, you know, it's going to be whatever is going to help uh, the majority party right now passed some of these legislation. So, you know, I, if that if that means getting rid of it completely, then I think that's probably going to be the move that people are aiming for, particularly the progressive wing of the party who really want to get some of these bigger uh, social priorities passed. Mm -hmm. And do you really see many political risks for Democrats uh, coming out so hard, you know, against the filibuster right now when it's a very good chance that they could be in the minority in, uh, you know, in 2023? Um, I do think that, you know, it kind of depends on, on where they are. Like, if, if someone is going against against the filibuster, I guess, you know, it goes to show that they're standing in line with some of these things of wanting to get everything done while they, are, while they have the majority, um, you know, which they have now, but who knows what's going to happen in November. So I think it shows that they're in line with, with the Biden administration and passing the agenda while they have the power to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just we've seen so many videos, uh, especially ones of, you know, Majority Leader uh, Chuck Schumer talking about how we need to preserve the filibuster. You know, uh, you know, quite recently he was saying stuff like that. Uh, there's another speech back in 2005 where he's saying things like that. So it really seems like it's, you know, it could kind of be one of those, uh, you know, just kind of a political quagmire uh, if they end up losing the majority in 2022. But right now it seems as though uh, Build Back Better has stalled, you know, the uh, uh, spending bill they had. And it seems like what you're saying is uh, they're, what they're calling voting rights or, you know, election reform may also be stalled out too. Where do Democrats go? Where do they pivot if both these things are stalled out? Like, you know, two big agenda items. Where could they go from here, you know, uh, going into the rest of the year? I think that's the big conundrum uh, Democrats are facing right now. You know, the progressive wing has put a lot of pressure on uh, the moderate members and even vice versa at times to, you know, get something done on the table because, uh, you know, if they can't pass these things that the Biden administration wants to pass, particularly some of these social programs that they've promised, it's going to it's going to be really bad for them in the midterms if they can't bring anything to the table, um, aside from the infrastructure package, which is a huge win for the administration and for Democrats. but. Um, I think uh, a lot of the more liberal wing of the party really want to see some of these things come out uh, with, uh, you know, the child tax credit, universal pre-K, and some of these other programs that have been promised. Mm -hmm. it, and that would be as part of uh, different bills or the same one uh, from, you know, Build Back Better? 
Um, I think Democrats will have to go with standalone bills and pass new legislation right now, given that Build Back Better is stalled. It remains stalled. Uh, Senator Manchin hasn't signaled that he's changed his mind so much. Um, but I think, uh, you know, some members of the party are still trying to convince him. Um, we did see Speaker Pelosi speak out and said she's had conversations with him on this. But uh, right now, um, I think all eyes still remain on Manchin, who has not moved in his position. Mm-hmm. And do you think that we could see more just, you know, what most Americans would say are political games, maybe more focus on the, uh, you know, the January 6th committee, stuff like that, uh, coming especially from House Democrats, if, you know, both these bills end up stalling out? Do you think it'll just be more members of Congress taking political shots at each other for the rest of the year? Absolutely. Um, if Democrats can't pass anything on their agenda or, or their bills remain stalled, then their other option is just to try and attack Republicans or, you know, the opposing party. So that's, I, I can definitely see that being a political tactic down the line, especially in a critical election year like this one. Mm-hmm, definitely. Um, we'll have to keep, uh, keep an eye on that, see how it progresses. But uh, Mika, thanks for coming on and joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much.